Different people have different traits. Why is that? Well, the easy answer is that different people have different DNA. But when you think about it, DNA is a molecule buried inside the nucleus of your cells. How does a molecule like DNA influence the external traits that we observe with our eyes? Well, in order to answer this question, we're going to take a look at the process of protein synthesis. Let's start with a little background information before we dive in. First of all, remember that DNA is organized in a particular way. Within a cell, there is the nucleus. And within this organelle, there are chromosomes, rod-shaped bodies. In this picture, they look like X's because the chromosomes have doubled. Within a chromosome are smaller units called genes. And then genes are made up of the double helix DNA that we're familiar with. Remember that a gene has the instructions to build a protein, and that protein relates to a trait. Next piece of background information, RNA. RNA is another nucleic acid, just like DNA. And just like DNA, RNA is made up of nucleotides. You can see a phosphate, a sugar, and a base. Phosphate, sugar, base phosphate sugar base. However, there are some important differences between RNA and DNA. The most obvious is that RNA is single-stranded rather than double-stranded. A second difference is that RNA does not contain the T base. Instead, it contains the U base. Now, RNA follows the same complementary base pairing rules, but any time it sees an A, it's going to have to use a U to pair up. The final difference is the sugar. DNA has deoxyribose, but RNA has ribose. There are three different types of RNA in your body. Uh, the first one is messenger RNA, and it does just that. It delivers instructions for DNA. The second type is rRNA, or ribosomal RNA, and this RNA is found within ribosomes, the organelle that makes proteins. And a third type of RNA is transfer RNA, and it transfers amino acids. So now let's take an overview of protein synthesis. There are two main steps to protein synthesis. Now let's orient ourselves. Here is the nucleus of a cell, and outside the nucleus is the cytoplasm. The first step in protein synthesis is for DNA to be transcribed into a molecule of mRNA. So during transcription, DNA is used to make a single-stranded mRNA molecule. That mRNA molecule will then leave the nucleus through the pores and find itself a ribosome. The job of the ribosome is to translate the mRNA molecule into a chain of amino acids that makes up a protein. Now, sometimes you'll see the term polypeptide used instead of protein because some proteins are made up of multiple chains of amino acids. But to keep things simple, we're just going to use polypeptide and protein interchangeably. Now, you might be asking yourself, why do we need mRNA? Why doesn't DNA just head to the ribosome uh, and the ribosome can use DNA to make amino acids into proteins? Well, the reason is that DNA is a very important molecule, obviously, and so we don't want it wandering around the cell where it could be damaged or lost. So DNA has to stay inside the nucleus. The job of mRNA is to deliver the instructions from DNA to the ribosome. So to sum up those two steps, transcription is using DNA to make mRNA within the nucleus. And although it didn't show it in the diagram, you need enzymes to do this. Translation is when mRNA goes to the ribosome and the ribosome builds a protein using the instructions in mRNA. And again, that's catalyzed by enzymes. Now you might be wondering, how does a strand of mRNA actually instruct the ribosome to build a protein? Well, in order to answer that question, we need to crack the genetic code. Here's how the genetic code works. Let's start with DNA. If we're going to do transcription with DNA to make RNA, it's pretty simple. 
basically the DNA unwinds and we build a complementary strand of mRNA. So you can see that this T paired up with an A. Here it's a little weird. A pairs up with U because remember there's no T in RNA. The C pairs up with the G, the T pairs up with the A, and so on. So this part is simple. But then when the RNA is used to build a protein during translation, every three RNA bases codes for a particular amino acid. So each one of these is an amino acid within the polypeptide or within the protein. And every three RNA bases is called a codon because it codes for one amino acid. So here you can see we have three codons of mRNA and three amino acids result. Now how do we know which codon goes for which amino acid? Well, scientists were able to crack the genetic code a few years ago, and they've developed a codon table so that you can translate the genetic code as well. So if we look at this codon table, there's a lot of information here. To orient ourselves, the first thing to note is that mRNA bases are written along the sides of the table. And then the amino acids that are coded for are written inside the cells of the table. Sometimes you'll have a three-letter abbreviation for the amino acids, sometimes just a one-letter abbreviation. Now let's say you had a codon that was CCA. Well, you would find C as your first base here. Here's the second base, C, and then here's A. CCA codes for the amino acid PRO, which is short for proline. So one important thing to note is that uh, this genetic code is universal. So humans, bacteria, fish, zebra, plants, all of them use this same codon table to crack their genetic code. Another important thing to note is that a few of these codons are start or stop codons. What that means is that they tell the ribosome to either start or stop translation. And finally, the genetic code is redundant. Here you can see that two different codons are coding for the same amino acid. Here, all four codons are coding for the same amino acid. Because of that, the code is said to be redundant. So let's see this code in action by taking a closer look at transcription and translation. So here is a piece of mRNA. Here's three nucleotides that are the start codon. Here's three that are the stop codon. Now when it goes to the ribosome, here's what happens. Here's the messenger RNA at the ribosome. And you can see right here the codons of the messenger RNA. Now the tRNA is going to bring amino acids to the ribosome. And it's going to know which ones to bring because it's going to match up to its complementary mRNA. So on the tRNA, we have triplets called anticodons. Anticodons are specifically for tRNA. Codons are for mRNA. And the anticodons will be complementary to the mRNA codons. And as the tRNA brings the amino acids over, the amino acids bind together to form the protein. Here's the process in action. Here we've got our ribosome messenger RNA that came from the nucleus. Here's the tRNA. Here's its amino acid. And you can see the codons here and one anticodon. So the first step is that the anticodon of a tRNA carrying an amino acid will bind to the complementary start codon on mRNA. The next step is that another tRNA comes along and binds to the codon of mRNA. The next step is that the amino acids form a bond. And now the first tRNA can leave. It's lost its amino acid, it'll head off and find another one. And then the ribosome is gonna slide along the mRNA to open up a spot for a new tRNA. So this tRNA will come along, it's complementary to the codon here, and it'll drop off its amino acid and the process will continue until all hundred or thousand codons are translated into a protein. So to sum up this process, 
Protein synthesis involves transcribing DNA into mRNA and then translating the mRNA into a protein. 